Hey everybody, Soybean Farmer here. I found a little bit of time to get back out here and work on this motor. And the, the next problem I had to resolve with this thing was um, Briggs & Stratton came up with something called Chocomatic. Now, what they did was they connected the throttle linkage to the choke linkage. And the only way to engage the choke was to set the throttle wide open, actually past the wide open point. So when the engine cranked, when you backed off a little bit on the throttle, you were at wide open. These motors, I've got a lot of experience with them, and they won't run until they get warm. And they need to sit there on full choke for about 12 to 18 seconds. You can start backing that choke off at that point, but I'm, I'm talking about idling speed. Um, usually takes about a minute and a half to get fully off a choke and have the engine stay alive with cold air coming into it and be able to ask for power out of the motor and not have it die. So I did not want their setup because if you're sitting there running with that high an RPM on this thing when you first crank it and it's been sitting say two weeks all the oil's in the bottom of it. It's going to take a couple of seconds for the oil pump in this thing to pick up the oil and get it to the top of the motor. And I just saw excessive wear in it. So I had to come up with a way to defeat their system. And I've been thinking about it and thinking about it. And <clears throat> what I finally figured out was I salvaged this piece off of the old motor. That's the bracket where. The control cable came in right here. This piece clamps to the actual um, outer sheathing on the control cable, letting the wire come through and connect here. Now, the trick was, instead of having this control rod here coming up off of the throttle linkage, which I've gotten disconnected now, hitting this choke control back here, I needed to get a control linkage to come from here and go straight back to that linkage. Well, problem I ran into when I tried to use the piece off that came with this off of the old motor, this piece was larger than the holes that were actually cut in that piece of plastic back there. And, you know, one more obstacle. I looked at taking the carburetor off of the uh, motor to get to that piece of plastic to drill it out so that I could use this piece. That's just too much work. So. I took the control linkage that was very similar to this, that was longer than this piece, off of here, this lever here, and got it in the vise with some pliers and was able to rebend it to recreate that hook right there that you need to get it properly in place. And after, I reckon, about 30 minutes of messing with it, I hit success. So with this all the way out like this, the choke is fully off. Pulling it over this way like that, the choke is fully on. And as the engine warms up, you'll be able to back off on it like this um, manually and release the choke. So I am delighted, tickled to death, that I've been able to accomplish that and separate the choke, recreate it, fully manual choke, separating that from their uh, chokomatic. Uh, connection down here to the throttle. I mean, I just didn't want to do it that way. Now, the other issue that I've run into, I wanted to reuse the header pipes, the exhaust header pipes. Now, I'll put light on it so you can see it, but right there is the exhaust port uh, on this motor. And the header pipes were pitted real bad, and the original um, exhaust gaskets that I had taken off of it, you see there's one there, it's in pretty bad shape. It's not something I wanted to put back in a brand new motor situation. So I found a lawnmower repair shop up in Raleigh and went and bought two brand new ones but that was still not going to resolve my problem because there was pitting in the uh, header pipe where it bolts up down there to the uh, exhaust port. Thought about taking it to a machine shop, 
but I knew they'd charge arm and a leg. People that own those Bridgeport milling machines are really, really proud of those machines. And they don't even think about cranking the thing up for uh, much less than about $75. They call it setup time, which I understand. So I looked around here at what I had and how I would accomplish uh, resurfacing of the bearing surface where that gasket goes to. And this is what I came up with. So y'all come on, let's go outside and I'll show you. Okay, out here on the workbench, what I've got is a belt sander turned upside down. And that's one of the um, header pipes in my hand. And that's the bearing surface on the header pipe that needs to be nice and clean and go up against that gasket I was showing you. Well, this one, what I did, I've already got it clean and looking really good and cut some of the deeper pits out of it. But delicately, by running the belt sander and holding this flat here gently, cutting a little bit at the time, I accomplished that. Now, you look, I don't know if it's going to focus, but right up in here where my fingernail's at, there's still a little bit of pitting. There's a little bit of scarring right here. But I feel pretty confident that at this point I've cut enough of it down that I'm going to be able to achieve a seal on this. Now, here's one that I haven't put on there yet. So, let's see what happens when I start to work on this one. Now, I've got to use one hand to hold the belt sander and one hand to hold this. Because I didn't try to come up with any way to clamp this thing down. So, let's see what happens. Okay, got some on that side, but I need to put a little bit more on that side. So I was holding it not quite true. All right, let's go again. Okay, we're getting there. Now I'm not pressing real hard, I'm just going at it gently, but I want to cut a little bit more of this down. There's still some pitting up here on this side, so let's go again. Still a little bit more need to cut down on this side here. Let's go again. Okay, getting real close now to having what I want. It's a little bit more right here. Okay, that's got it pretty much cut down and cleaned up a lot. And I think I've got enough flat surface now to get a seal with that gasket. Now, what I need to check for is did I mess up the flatness in here? And I've got to get something that I know is true and correct to judge it with. So, I'll be right back while I run in the shop and get this tool. Y'all wait right here. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for your patience. What I've got here is uh, something a machinist gave me long years ago. Um, 
and it's truly straight across here. This is not something you would use as a prior tool or you'd run it, ruin it. So what I'm going to do is I want to hold this like that and I'm going to lay this up here hole to hole and I've got it just about right. And now I'm looking down across there and based on what I'm seeing here and now let me take it out front of the camera. All right, I'm looking at it now where I'm looking straight at it and back at the camera so y'all can see. I didn't destroy the flatness on that. Uh, so I'm pleased with that. Now, let's check the other one and see how that came out because I hadn't checked it yet. I just, I'm gonna line it up to my eyesight first which is out from behind the camera and then back down in the camera to where you can see and I didn't destroy the flatness on that. Now I know this is crude. Uh, it's not set up on a bridge port, but I did get a lot of the pits out of it and I did get it clean. There's a certain amount of compression I'm gonna get out of that exhaust gasket. So I'm feeling pretty confident now that this is gonna actually seal for me across here. And so I've got one more thing out of the way knocked out about getting my um, pieces put on my motor before I put it back on the chassis. Hey everybody, this has been Soybean Farmer. This is getting kind of long, so I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks very much for subscribing to my channel. And uh, y'all have a, a good evening, and bye now.